seven years ago this past St. Patty's Day, uh, I walked in and uh, I thought, who is that really cute girl with the hair that is really too long to be spiked like that? And it was funny because uh, she had asked me uh, for my phone number and I refused to give it to her initially. A few weeks later, you know, uh, she called me and our friendship began and little did I know that fate had more in plan for us than just being friends. Hello, my name is Tracy Johnson. I'm originally from Indiana. Uh, I was in law enforcement for close to 12 years, and at the age of 34, I had a deep desire to join the Army, and this is where I met Donna. And Donna was a very, she's definitely a Taurus. <laughs> I related her to being a Taurus. She uh, didn't do what she didn't want to do. She was very strong-willed, and uh, but she was very loving and very personal. She had no problem telling you <laughs> her opinion. <laughs> and. Uh, what I loved about her is that she was a very forthright and very honest person. That's probably what I loved most about her. Well, besides the fact that she put up with me. <laughs> Donna and I uh, were originally going to get married when we both came home from deployment back in 2008. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still in place. We were afraid to put our careers in jeopardy. And I wanted a marriage for her. Uh, I didn't want just a ceremony in front of our family and friends. I wanted something that was legal because I loved her so much. I fought so hard not to cry because I was so happy. I was finally marrying the woman that I was so madly in love with. I won the mountains for. They were supposed to be doing a uh, key leader engagement with the Afghanistan Uniform Police. And they met and they wanted to do a walking patrol. From what, I re from what I read in the reports, the guy was waiting on him when they set up their checkpoint and he just basically infiltrated uh, the corridor and came upon him before anybody knew it. And I, I believe his target was the, uh, their police chief. And uh, unfortunately Donna was in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had talked briefly, and she said, well, babe, I'll, I'll call you before I go out on patrol. And I know my wife. She's always in a hurry in the mornings and, <laughs> and usually late to just about anything. And uh, so I said, that's okay, babe. I understand if you don't call me in the morning because I know how mornings can get hectic because I've been deployed before and I know how things go. And I said, just as long as you... You call when you when you get back. Normally she would call between 10:30 and 1 o'clock, and she hadn't called by 10:30, which I thought was really strange. So I got up and I immediately started panicking. You know, sometimes the best thing to do is just bury your head and hope that it all goes away. So that's exactly what I did. I buried my head and hoped that it all went away. And her sister called me a short while later, and I didn't want to answer it. And first I ignored it. And I picked back up the phone and I called her back. And she said there were uniformed people at her house. And I lost it. Last thing I wanted was to be here in this life without her. I knew that the federal government didn't recognize our marriage. I knew that North Carolina didn't recognize our marriage. But I didn't care because she was my wife. I didn't get my own casualty assistance officer. Her family was assigned a casualty assistance officer. He did the best he could, and, and her family did the best they could to incorporate me on any of the decisions or anything like that. But, uh, you know, getting the flag, even though it's, it's uh, extremely important, I honestly, if I would have had a choice, I would have let her mom have that flag. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the flag or the medal or the, or the uh, awards. It's just the fact that she was recognized as my spouse is all I really cared about. But all the little things that people don't realize is that, you know, even being allowed to ride in the, ride in the uh, limousine with the family and sit in the front pew with the family as her spouse, I mean, all those little things mean a lot. Even to be, even be allowed to sit graveside with the family I could have been completely shut out, and if it wasn't for her family, I would have been completely shut out. I mean, I was allowed a lot of things, mainly because I was military, 
and because of and because of her family support. I mean, all those those little things mean more to me than the flags and the awards and the medals. I mean, them allowing me to love her 